Well, we've done it. We've arrived at the seventh, but not the last, part of this series, examining the accents of each of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros, as heard in the HBO show Game of Thrones. Now it's time for the accents of the Reach, which is a very posh, prosperous place, starting with the people's princess, Marjorie Tyrell. Marjorie speaks with an incredibly posh accent and wears a permanent smirk on her face. Even when she's annoyed, she remains well-spoken and correct-sounding. Bad men wanted to come into this city and do terrible things, but your father stopped them. Olena Tyrell, the wily old battle-axe matriarch of House Tyrell, is just as witty and waspish as she is in the books. It was treason. I warned them. Robert has two sons and Renly has an older brother. How can he possibly have any claim to that ugly iron chair? Spot on performance by Diana Rigg, she gets some wonderful lines. It's done. It is. And now the rains weep o'er our halls. Mace Tyrell is a bumbling, pompous oaf with an excellent singing voice. So give me a kiss by the long canal, and give me two kisses in salty town. He's never happier than when he has his tongue jammed right up Tywin's golden behind. Lord Tyrell, be a good man. Fetch my quill and paper. Loras Tyrell has the sort of lazy posh accent of one who's never had to really try in life. Your sister looks very beautiful. As does yours. So, are you looking forward to your wedding? Yes, very much. Our fathers are both rather keen on the prospect. <laughs> they certainly are. This Tyrell lady in waiting to Elena sounds oddly northern. Jack Bulwer, the member of the Night's Watch, who correctly guesses this charming young lady's rendition of a popular song, also sounds weirdly northern, despite being from the Reach. <laughs> the bear and the maiden fair! <laughs> the Tyrell servant, who dares to question Lady Elena on when the cheese will be served, at least sounds posh enough to be from the Reach. The cheese will be served after the cakes, my lady. The cheese will be served when I want it served. Marjorie Tyrell's handmaiden, who is deeply concerned that her ladyship will get peasant shit all over her dress, sounds very well spoken and RP. You'll ruin your dress. I have others. Gerald Hightower is the sure of himself commander of the Kingsguard in the era of the Mad King. Gets one good line. And we weren't there. Your friend the usurper would lie beneath the ground if we had been. Axel Florent brother of the deranged Celise, doesn't share his sister's newfound religious beliefs and is duly burnt alive for it. The family's own. Celise! You're the stars that guide us. Celise Florent is a wild-eyed fanatic who is happy to let a sexy red witch sleep with her husband Stannis. She sounds suitably deranged in a manner familiar to anyone who's ever been handed a Watchtower magazine at their doorstep. One morning, he shot two seagulls on the beach. I've never tasted anything as good as grilled seagull. <laughs> Melissa Florent, Celise's cousin, is married to Randall Tarley. She's well-spoken in a mumsy sort of way. Oh my. You are lovely. Randall Tarley is a belligerent old bastard in the vein of Alistair Thorne and he hates wildlings just as much, unfortunately, for his son, Sam. You're a wildling. The Seven Kingdoms have waged war against these savages for centuries, and here I sit, hosting one in my hall. Dickon Tarly has a sort of good-natured manner and speaks with an upper-middle-class accent. He even shows some dignity when mocked by this up-jumped cutthroat. It was glorious. Come on, your father's not here. All my life we've been pledged to House Tyrell. I knew some of those men. Tala Tarly is a slightly insipid posh girl who fusses over dresses and lives in fear of her father. I want a dress for dinner. You can wear one of mine. What's your colour? 
in night blue or silver? Silver, maybe. Well, I think that's everyone. I can't think of anyone who I might have met. Swagger down the street with your red lips and funky beat. You better hold your head up to the sky. I'm gonna roll with you till the day I die. I know I've perhaps been a bit harsh on Samuel Tarly in the past, but he utterly deserves it, mostly due to his northern fucking accent. I know for a fact that some of the officers go to that brothel in Molestown. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, don't you think it's a little bit unfair? Making us take our vows while they sneak off for a little sally on the side. He's from the Reach. We've just heard each of his family members speak. Did he stop off at a pie shop near Winterfell on his way to the wall and just adopt the accent immediately? This is basically the point I wanted to make when I began this series. If you're making a rough geographical equivalent to Britain in your medieval fantasy show and you're willing to make different characters have different accents corresponding to where they're from, then don't half arse it. Or this is the result. Overall, I'll be awarding the reach. 6. Slaying Sams out of 7 Thank you for being with me this far. In future videos, I'll be covering the accents and speech patterns of other areas of Westeros such as the Crownlands and the Wall, in addition to taking a look overseas at Essos and its many cultures.